Hey guys, Lockie Pure here, and in today's free training, we're going to be discussing how to overcome your customers' most ruthless objections so you make more sales. Now, let's just dive straight into it. Now, this is a bit of a weird slide, right? But have you ever heard of the Mexican walking fish, aka the axolotl? Now, before we dive into the training, I've got a bit of trivia for you. I want to ask you a question. What does the Mexican walking fish have to do with you growing your business? It's a bit of a strange question, I know. Maybe it caught you a little bit off guard, but I want you to think about it. We want to have a bit of fun in this presentation while also teaching you some really useful tactics you can use to grow your business with predictability. Now, I'm going to give you a hint to this question. It involves their ability to camouflage. So while we're going through this free training, I want you guys to try and think about what does um, the axolotl's ability to camouflage have to do with you growing your business? Now, without further ado, let's just get into it, right? So what are you going to discover in this free training? Number one, you're going to be getting a step-by-step -step action plan to identify and overcome the number one reason why customers are not buying your product or service. This is really, really helpful when increasing the sales and growing your business without spending any more on advertising. Number two, how to find the money murdering mistakes in your marketing, which could be pushing customers away. Sounds a bit strange that your marketing could be pushing customers away, but it's true. And I'm going to show you how to fix them quickly so you aren't unnecessarily losing customers to your competitors. Number three, how to sell your products and services far more effectively than your closest competitors without seeming salesy. I'm going to show you how to convince your customers your product or service is superior to so become the logical choice without using any pushy you know, tactics or slimy closing lines or um, anything like that. Last one, a few compelling yet simple ways to take the friction out of the sales process so your customers actually want to buy from you. So this is basically so you'll no longer have to push and shove customers to buy. Instead, they will actually ask you how they can come on board on their own accord. Now, at the end of this free training, you're actually also going to be getting the objection shattering system for free. I want you to walk away from this training with not only useful tactics you can implement, but some actual step-by-step -step guides which show you how to do that, which is the step-by-step -step objection handling action plan, an ebook on how to turn cold leads into hot leads, three ways to increase your website's conversion rate for not only the lead generation businesses out there, but also the e-commerce and our persuasive products transformation table, which we're gonna be looking at in more depth later on inside this free training. Now, who is this training actually for? For service-based business owners. So this is mortgage brokers, lawyers, consultants, dentists. If you are in the service-based industry, this training is gonna help you grow your business. E-commerce business owners, online stores, you may own a software, you could be in retail, whatever it is, this training will benefit you. This, this training will also benefit you if you want to grow your business with predictability and consistency over the long term. You are not looking for a silver bullet or a get-rich-quick scheme in this video. Now, if you want a strategy that's built upon sound advice and results, this training is also for you. We very much practice what we preach here at Digital Knockout, and I'm not going to give you some, you know, make a million dollars overnight strategy. What I want to do is show you an outline a simple yet predictable strategy that's gonna help you grow your business that's based on sound results and evidence. Now, if you have been burned by marketing agencies in the past, this is also the perfect training for you because it's actually gonna highlight a few reasons as to why that may have happened and how you can avoid that moving forward in the future. Now, who the hell am I and why should you actually give a damn about anything I say? Well, hello, my name's Lockie Pure and I'm the co-founder and head of marketing here at Digital Knockout. A few of my expertise is a direct response marketing, copywriting, and sales psychology. Um, I've worked for many, many years in the direct response business and also in the direct sales business. So my expertise really comes down to how do we take someone who's a cold prospect who has never heard of your brand before and smoothly and seamlessly transition them into a high value paying customer without using pushy tactics, right? A lot of people, they hear the word sales and they think, um, you know, it's a sleazy salesperson. Well, really, it's just about effective communication with your customers. And today, I'm going to be showing you how you can achieve that. So, does what you're about to see actually work? Yes, it does. And let me prove that to you. So, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of a company called Purple. Now, what Purple is, is they're a breakthrough mattress company. So, they sell mattresses from businesses to customers. It was founded in 2013 by brothers Tony and Terry Pierce. It's based in the United States. And Purple has captured 75% of all social engagement with mattress companies online. It's a pretty crazy statistic, right? And that is worldwide. So that's United States, United Kingdom, 
Australia, New Zealand, you know, all these huge, huge countries, they are at the top and they've got 75% of that social engagement. They also profitably pierced their way into an $18.7 billion industry seemingly overnight. Now again, this isn't an overnight success. No real successes ever are, but they did it with rapid pace. I'm gonna be showing you how they did it. And let's just look at the brand recognition and popularity growth. So we went on Google Trends and we can look at the Purple Mattress's actual like brand awareness growth over the past few years has been absolutely absurd and they did it using the strategies you're going to learn in this training. Now, when they started using these strategies, the media actually went crazy and they got put up on all these different websites. We can also see the annual revenue report here. So this is sourced from PRN Newswire and you can see they were founded in 2013. Using this strategy, they got to 2014 with $36.7 million in turnover. Again, this is by no means profit. This is revenue. By 2015, they're at 48.3 million. 2016, they're at 65. 2017, they're at 196 million dollars. In 2018, they did 285 million dollars in turnover, and at the end of 2019, their projections are they'll be turning over 350 million dollars per year. Pretty crazy stuff, right? But what about lead generation or service-based businesses? Now, I'm sure you've heard of Yui, right? Yui, it's the, you know, it's the one with the ads where everybody in their car is basically having the best time. Well, they're actually Australia's fastest growing car and house insurer for the past four years and running. So they've used this exact same strategy which you're about to learn to achieve this phenomenal feat, as well as, you know, buy a brand new $73 million headquarters, right? <laughs> so they're doing pretty well. But let's look at one last example as well, just so I really have you on my side and I can show you that people are actually implementing this to grow their business with great success. This isn't just some random strategy. So Highsmile, what is Highsmile? Well, Highsmile is an e-commerce brand who sell teeth whitening kits. They were founded in 2014 by Nick Merkovich and Alex Tomic, who are both 22 and 24 years old, which is ridiculous. They only started off with $20,000 in capital. They now have over 1 million, 1 million customers worldwide. They were both featured on the Forbes 30 under 30 list. And they're also featured on the Young Rich list with a combined net worth of $46 million. Now, we can see they've used a strategy to on Instagram generate over 1.1 million organic followers, over 1.8 million Facebook followers, and they've got social media like giants literally on board promoting the shit out of their product and they're basically growing like wildfire. You can see that by the annual revenue report here. So founded in 2014, like I said, 2015, they were turning over 3.4 million. 2016, they were turning over 10 million. 2017, turning over 20 million. And you can see that astronomical spike, which is absurd, in 2018 where they hit $100 million dollars in annual revenue, okay? So, what are all these businesses doing to grow their business like wildfire? And more importantly, how can you copy this proven strategy to grow your own business with predictability? Well, the answer to this question is reason why advertising. I want you to think about that for a minute, reason why advertising. Now, you may not know exactly what reason why advertising is or ever heard of it before, so let me break it down. Reason why advertising is presenting the benefits of a product or service in a way which strategically overcomes your buyer's key objections. I want you to think about that for a second. Presenting the benefits of a product or service in a way which strategically overcomes your buyer's key objections. Now, what does that really mean? Well, it basically means what I just said a couple of times, right? We're not just like marketing our product in any random way that presents random benefits. We wanna find out what the main objections are of our customers and present our product in a way that overcomes those. So it's basically selling in a much more effective way, right? Now, how can you use reason why advertising to increase sales in your own business? Let's get into it, right? I want you to picture your ideal customer, for example. Picture 10 people walk through your doors or 10 people buy online. What do eight of them look like? Let's talk about the 80%, right? How old are they? What is their gender? What are their interests? Where do they live? What country? What suburb, in fact? What do they do on the weekends? Do they have kids? Do they not have kids? I want you to get a really, really crystal clear picture and visualization of who your ideal customer is because the clearer that is, 
the better accuracy you'll be able to have when trying to identify the objections of your customers. Now, once you've clearly identified who the customer is, I want you to think of the main reasons why they do and why they do not buy from you. There could be heaps of reasons. It could be price. It could be the, you know, the competitor has a better guarantee than you. But I also want you to think of the reasons why they do buy from you, right? So you may have awesome customer service. Your product may be manufactured in Australia. There could be many, many different things. But the key things you need to look at here in terms of reasons why is why they do not buy from you. So these are the objections that you're getting, right? So if you're a lead generation company or a service-based business owner, this is like your sales guys who are always complaining about this reason, whether it be price, whether it be you know our value isn't basically justifying the price of the product, um, we haven't been in business long enough, um, our service sucks, our service doesn't include this, the competitors are giving away this for free, X, Y, Z. Those are the reasons why they do not buy. Or if you're an e-commerce business owner, maybe your product isn't sourced in Australia. Maybe you don't have the right size fit. Maybe your feature of your product isn't as good as the direct competitor. You need to be very clear with these reasons why they do not buy from you. And why is that? Well, these key objections are the hurdles which you must overcome to secure the sale. From now on, I want you to picture objections like hurdles because then they're basically things that you just have to develop your marketing and your systems around to overcome in order to make the sale. Now, most companies and marketing agencies try to ignore the elephant in the room. They try to pretend or at least try to look the other way when it comes to these main objections. So for example, if your product or service doesn't have a feature that your competitors have and it's obvious that your customers are concerned with this because you're getting objections about it, most marketing companies, when they set up your marketing for you, they'll just try and pretend that doesn't exist and be like, okay, shit, let's just work with what we've got, even though it's actually not gonna work in the first place. Let's just try and get some money out of the client and get that set up. Or perhaps you yourself have thought, hmm, that's a bit of a struggle to get around. I couldn't really be bothered. Let's just pretend that that weakness doesn't exist. Well, the unfortunate thing is your customer and your client, when they're on your website, doesn't pretend that weakness in your product or service doesn't exist, right? They go and look for other people to buy from who don't have that weakness. Which means if you have ever been burned by marketing ag agencies who simply cost you more than they make you, run non-profitable campaigns time and time again, or maybe even refuse to invest in advertising because it just never works, it's most likely because your advertising and website does not overcome your buyer's key objections. I want you to think about that really, really clearly. So if you're sending traffic to a website and it's not converting, or you sent it to an opt-in page, or a landing page, or a consultation page, or a booking form, whatever it is, if it's not converting, it's most likely because your advertising or website does not overcome your buyer's key objections. Sure, you probably talk a lot about the benefits, you've been in business you know, 10 years, whatever it is, but we wanna really specifically design your marketing, your website to overcome key objections, which we'll identify in just a moment. So let's get into it, right? Let's see step-by-step step how you can hurdle over your bias objections like a pro and grow your business with predictability. But just before we do, let's look at a real-life example of reason why advertising in action. You remember Purple, right? This is the company we just looked at. I want you to picture what's one key objection most people have when buying a new mattress, okay? We're getting into a practical example here. I want you to pay attention and try and adapt this to your own business. It's gonna be uncomfortable, of course. What's the number one key objection people have on buying a mattress? Well, it's why you go into the store and jump on it, right? You lay down on it 10 times to make sure that you're not about to drop a thousand to five thousand dollars on something that you're not actually gonna to wanna to sleep on. Now, what's Purple's answer to this objection? Remember, they sell mattresses online. So it's pretty hard for people, in, it's impossible in fact really, for them to get like a test um, of lying down on a mattress. Here's their answer. Purple Smart Comfort Grid is designed to dynamically flex under pressure so your shoulders and hips are properly cradled and supported so there's no pressure all night. So when someone says the mattress is going to be uncomfortable, this is basically Purple's answer. They've developed a smart comfort grid which is basically a feature of one of their products that dynamically flexes under pressure so there's no pressure, right? Now, the real persuasive power lies in how this reason why is presented, not just the answer. Because I'm sure if a customer came to you with an objection or to your salespeople or to your website and complained about some feature of your product, you would have an answer, right? You probably would be able to give them you know, some sort of compelling reason why that objection doesn't effectively stop them from buying. But it's how you present it that really counts. Let's look at exactly how Purple presented this smart comfort grid. So on one of their product pages, right below the picture of the mattress where you can add it to cart, they have this. 
So it's the Purple Smart Comfort Grid versus Memory Foam. Now, Purple's technology is a little bit different in the mattress compared to memory foam, which most people purchase a memory foam, right? So how can they sell and basically convince you to overcome it? Well, they talk about the pro of their benefits here. So let's look, relieves pressure points. Purple Smart Comfort Grid is designed to dynamically flex under pressure, so your shoulders and hips are properly cradled and supported, no pressure or not. So basically what I just said, they present it here, but with a bit of an image, right? They have the egg getting pushed into this rubber. So it kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of if you were laying on this rubber, what would happen with your hips and your shoulders. So it is dynamically flexing. Whereas over on the right hand side here, they do a really great job of calling out your alternative to buying a purple mattress. Heat activated compression. The more your body heat activates the cells, the more memory foam warms up and collapses under pressure and the less cushioning it can provide. Ain't nobody got time for that, right? So use a bit of humor at the end. But what you can see they're doing here is they clearly identified one of the main reasons someone wouldn't buy a mattress, which is it's going to be uncomfortable. They've given a reason why the purple smart comfort grid overcomes this objection. And they've directly compared that next to the alternative the customer has of making another purchase. Can you see, like once you read this page, it becomes very hard then to go and buy a memory foam mattress unless the memory foam companies are doing an awesome job just like this at overcoming this key objection to buying, right? And it doesn't stop there. They do it three more times with other objections, okay? So we can see in the top left-hand side, there's a too much body pressure objection tackled. On the right-hand side, hot sleeps making me sweaty objection, which is another one. They handle that again. And then on the bottom left-hand side, low quality mattresses breaking down over time. So you can see they've done this in three separate occasions on their product page. So if we're comparing product pages here with purple on the left-hand side versus just a general mattress company over on the right-hand side, it's pretty obvious which company is selling their product more effectively and which company you'd feel more comfortable with buying. I hope this is making sense, guys. So let's move on, right? What about lead generation? Well, you remember Yui, okay? Let's look at one of the key concerns most people have with insurance companies. Insurance companies don't really care about me or what I personally need. Kind of like a bank, right? You just feel like another number. Nobody smiles when you walk in. The place feels like a funeral. It's ice cold and you instantly regret it, right? It's kind of the same with insurance companies. So what's Yui's answer to that? Yui takes the time to listen to what you really need. We don't treat you like another number. What you need from your policy matters to us. <laughs> but let's be honest, right? How lame and cliche does that actually sound? Super lame. But let's look at their homepage and how they actually present it in a really authentic and compelling way. Let's go over on the far left-hand side. So again, this is tackling the you don't care about me personally objection. We can see circled in red there is, I spoke to May and she didn't make any assumptions. Fiona only goes into the office once a week. The rest of the time she works from home or does the running around with children. So I want you to imagine that you're Fiona or that you're a mother of a similar age or a female of a similar age to Fiona. Having that picture there of her and then talking about how that she's not in the office very often and she's running around with chid, uh, children is really, really going to resonate with you. And it shows that Yui did in fact listen to Fiona's true concerns and she, they're not treating her like another number. They actually understand her personal life. Now, if you're someone going to an insurance company, like we just saw, that is a real concern for you. So this is really, really effective in showing that, hey, Yui actually does, and we're willing to put it smack bang on our homepage, right? Let's go to the top right-hand side. You don't care about me objection again. For an insurer that listens, thank Yui. Now, this is pretty generic. This isn't really doing much, but it's talking about the copywriting here. The copywriting here isn't just saying Yui's the best or Yui's, you know, one of the fastest growing companies in Australia for, you know, car and home insurance. They're saying insur uh, for an insurer that listens, think Yui. So they're talking about listening again, right? Now let's go down to you don't care about me objection down the bottom circled in red. Watch Fiona's story. Now this is a really, really awesome video that I'm not going to get up live. You can just simply go into YouTube and type in Yui Fiona. But it actually has videos of her, you can kind of see in the top left-hand side there, of her in her car, of her driving around her home city, really doing an in-depth dive into Fiona's life and how like the insurance policy that Yui gave her benefits that life. So you can see how effective this is, right? But you got to remember here, they're not bragging about boring old plain Jane product benefits. This content has been designed to strategically isolate and call out the customer's main objections. 
and then provide several reasons why this product overcomes those specific objections in a logical way which the buyer can believe. Now I want to ask you a question. What happens when your prospects run out of reasons why they should not buy your product or service? You make the sale, right? That is exactly what you're on this video to discover and that's what we're about to teach you in this free training. I just wanted to give you a few examples as to why and how this works so you can fully understand the concept of reason why advertising. So let's get started. Step number one in doing this in your own business is you need to identify and list your customer's most ruthless objections with great accuracy. In order to overcome your prospect's main objections, we must know exactly what they are. We want to identify the top 20% of objections, which are accounting for 80% of the lost sales in your business right now. So where can we find out which objections your customers are using against you most often? There are many places, here's a few. Google and Amazon product reviews, surveys, blogs and forums where your customers and your target market hang around. This could be on Facebook, it could be on Instagram, it could be on Reddit, it could be on Quora, wherever. Interview salespeople, your salespeople on the front line. I do a lot of work with direct sales companies, business to business, but also business to consumers. And when they come to us and they try and find out exactly what it is their main objections, the first question I ask them is, how often do you sit down with your salespeople on a daily basis and ask them what objections they're facing most often or what they're struggling with most often? Interview your customer support staff. If you're an e-commerce business owner and you don't have salespeople, you probably have chat support. You probably have email support. Sit down with those guys or, or girls and ask them what it is the main questions they're getting asked. What are the main reasons people are leaving? What are the main you know features and benefits of your product that people keep asking about? Perhaps you're not talking about those um, commonly enough on your product pages, on your cart pages, on your home pages, right? Look at your competitors' reviews. This is a great place if you're a business just starting off and you don't have any salespeople, you don't have any customer support staff to speak with, go directly to your competitors' reviews and look through, see what the pros and the cons are of what they're discussing. And interview your receptionist. Perhaps you're a brick and mortar business, perhaps you're you know, a face clinic or a hair salon. Go and sit down with your receptionist. They're the one handling all the phone calls, handling all the walk-ins off the street, right? These are the best places to start to find your customer's most ruthless objections that are costing you the most money. Now, let's look at a practical example, okay? Let's pretend for a moment you're selling mattresses. And you want to find out what the main objections are, which you must overcome in order to craft a lucrative marketing campaign. Now, I'm just using mattresses as an example, but this could be anything. You could be a mortgage broker. You could be selling, I don't know, teeth whitening kits. You could be selling shoes. You could be selling whatever it is. This is just an example. So try and imagine your business in place of this. So if we're selling mattresses, the first thing we can do is venture over at Amazon.com. Now, we want to search Amazon for mattresses in the top left. You can see there. We then want to sort it by average customer review so we can get the product listings which have the most reviews. If you look down the bottom there, you can see there's two red squares that highlights that Amazon has shown us one mattress with 13,000 reviews and another one with 27,000 reviews. Now we want to click on one of those mattresses and scroll down just below the image on the product page and we can see that there's the most common questions and answers, okay? And you can see on the left hand side of the question and answers, there's actually upvotes. So we can see this question at the top here, is it eight inches too thick? Um, you can see it has 61 votes. And then we go down 30 votes, down 24 votes. So you can already start to see what are your customers inquiring about most often? What do they care about? What don't they care about? Okay. And if we pay really close attention, we can just see we found one of our first main objections. So let's read this question aloud. To those who have owned this mattress for over a year, are there problems with body impressions or dents where one normally sleeps? So for example, what we can do, and I'm going to show you our objection handling chart here in just one moment, is we can go over and we can enter body impressions and dents where people normally sleep in our objection column because now we're starting to identify what objections our customers actually care about. Not what we think that they care about based on our years in the industry, what they're actually going out of their way to ask about. This is, this is very, very important, right? It's why I always recommend to my customers is, especially when it comes to e-commerce, is don't like hold too much weight when it comes to surveys. Um, when people are testing different products and they send out an email asking which product people would be more likely to buy, that data doesn't carry much weight. It's why if you go into eBay and you sort something by most sold, 
or most added to cart or most watched, you're gonna get different responses because the things people are putting their credit card out or taking the time out of the day to ask about is very different to what you may think. Let's move on. If we scroll down past the frequently asked questions, we can actually start to see reviews. And we can actually see that 2,075 people have rated this review as helpful. So you can see there's a lot of popularity and agreement that sort of congregates around different types of reviews and different matters, okay? Now you wanna read through all of these reviews and like basically have your objection handling sheet on the right hand side of you. But I wanna give you a pro tip, okay? I want you to pay extra special close attention to the three star reviews. Now that's may sound a bit strange, you may be asking why don't I just look at the five star reviews because it's gonna tell me all the awesome things people want in my product and then look at the one star reviews to look at all of the main objections people hate about the product. Now, this is a bit of a biased and maybe a little bit uh, politically incorrect. All the people who leave five-star reviews, a lot of them are paid. A lot of them are people who just love the product so much, they don't really give a shit about the actual quality of the product. They're just trying to convince themselves that they like it or they've been paid to do it. The people who have left one-star reviews are often crazy people. <laughs> now, I'm sorry if you're listening to this and you're someone who leaves five and one-star reviews. Um, I'm not calling you crazy. But there are some people who it just doesn't matter how good the product is, they're going to leave a one-star review. However, the people who leave three-star reviews on a product, they've actually thought about it. They've actually taken time to weigh up, why am I not giving this a two-star? Why am I not giving this a four-star? Why am I going three? Now, this may sound super meticulous and maybe you know a little bit crazy to pay this much attention, but when it comes down to your business, dominating your competitor's business, and the accuracy of which we correctly identify these main objections, we really do wanna go the extra mile and pay extra close attention as to why people are doing different things in our marketplace. Because like we said, the better we can understand our customers, the more effectively we can craft the marketing message that's gonna resonate with them. Okay, so pay extra close attention to three-star reviews. Now, what else can we do besides Amazon? We can actually spy on a direct competitor, right? So Casper is a mattress company. Now, all we have to do is visit their website and they have a review section pretty easy right but remember we want to sort it by three star reviews and now we can actually go through and read through all of their three star reviews you can see in total they have 5,000 but I personally like to pay extra close attention to the three star reviews now step number two we want to organize the most common objections into our persuasive products transformation table so this is basically the table, right? And you'll be getting this in your handout at the end of the lesson so you don't have to worry about taking notes throughout this time so we have in the first aisle, customer objection, second aisle, our solution, third aisle, customer benefit. So you can see I've fill, uh, basically filled out three examples here um, for our mattress and we have customer objections, our solutions and the customer benefits. So let's look at the first one, customer objection. I don't wanna feel my partner moving around while I'm trying to sleep. This is a genuine objection people have when they're buying a mattress, right? That's why some couples, you know, for other reasons, they sleep in separate beds. Okay, this is a genuine concern. So what is our solution here as a mattress company? Well, we can offer them a 120 night risk-free trial guarantee, basically where they can you know sleep on it, test it out for 120 nights. But also, when we're developing our mattress, we actually have some patent motion isolating technology, which is really, really cool. Now, what is the customer benefit of this? You never feel your partner or your pets wriggling around, so you fall asleep faster. Now, what is the actual power in filling out the sheet and how is it going to affect you as a business owner? Number one, on the left-hand side, you can see we've correctly identified the customer's objections. We then wanna put a lot of thought into how can we overcome those objections? What features do we have? What can we add in? What can we you know, do in addition to what we are doing now to basically overcome that objection, right? So potentially as a mattress company, you don't actually offer a 120 night risk-free trial guarantee. Maybe that's something you could do, all right? Maybe you didn't actually have the patent motion isolating technology. Perhaps it's just another mattress. But what you can do is add in the 120 night risk-free trial and suddenly you have a solution to your customer's main objection. Now in your marketing, you don't just wanna talk about the risk-free trial, you also wanna talk about what that means for the customer, okay? You wanna translate that product feature into a customer benefit, which is why we have that right-hand column. So if you go to a marketing agency or you try and implement this yourself, it suddenly becomes crystal clear what you need to do and what you need to write in your copy and present, okay? Let's move down and let's move through this uh, pretty quickly here. So hot sleeps make me sweaty. We have temperature neutralizing foam layer, 
on our mattress, which promotes airflow and it dissipates body heat. Customer benefit, you won't sweat the bed, leaving you to enjoy a perfectly cool, no matter the weather. Let's look at the second one. If the bed's too hard or too soft, it feels like a lot of pressure. We've tested 12 material combinations to find the perfect formula which dynamically adapts to your pressure points. The customer benefit means you never worry about sore hips or shoulders again. Instead, enjoy a bed that spoons you just right. Okay, now I've taken a bit of inspiration here from the Purple website because they have absolutely nailed it to a T. But I want you to really fill this out at the end of this training and pay extra special close attention to these columns because these columns being filled out effectively will equate to more sales and consistent return on investment when you put it into the marketplace. Now, what if you're a mortgage broker who specializes in, in for refinancing? Well, we're putting a lot of focus on e-commerce based businesses right now, but I want to also look at the service based business owners so you can get a lot out of this training as well. So if you're a mortgage broker and you specialize in refinancing, I've worked with many mortgage brokers, a lot of the objections they get is the customer thinks the bank will get them a better loan or a better rate on their home loan, sorry. So what's the solution? We have access to 25 different lenders, therefore we can guarantee to beat the bank's rate by 5%. Now, this is a real objection, okay? Many people don't go to mortgage brokers because the bank is just who they know. The banks do so much more advertising, they're always on TV promoting the shit out of their product. Um, and basically, people don't realize that as a mortgage broker, you have 20 free, 25 sorry, different lenders you can access and you can guarantee to beat the bank's rate, right? They just simply don't know that. So if you're a mortgage broker right now or you're a service-based business owner in a similar industry or you can see some correlation here, I want you to ask yourself, are you promoting the fact that you can actually get someone a better rate on their home loan because you have access to 25 different lenders? Or are you just saying, get a good rate on your home loan? Can you see the difference here? We're giving them a logical reason why, all right? The customer benefit here is you will get the cheapest possible rate on the market and save the maximum amount of money on your home loan, guaranteed. So it's pretty powerful stuff. Now, let's recap. What do we know so far? Well, we know the reasons why our prospects would not buy from us. We know the top 20% of objections, which account for 80% of the lost sales. We know how our product or service overcomes these main objections and how our solutions translate into compelling benefits which our prospects actually desire and want. So let's move on to step number three. Quickly audit your online presence to locate the shinks in your marketing armor. So before we run around throwing our reason why advertising everywhere, we need to find out exactly where we need it. Here's a simple checklist you can use to quickly identify your marketing weak spots. And when you're going through this, I want you to ask yourself, does my XYZ spot present my key objection handling solutions in a compelling way? So number one, your home page. Two, your landing page, your opt-in page, your lead magnets, your email follow-ups, your sales processes, your product page, your company videos, your cart page, and your blogs, all right? Does all of this content that you have specifically target your customer's key concerns? If it doesn't, you're letting a lot of money and a lot of customers fall through the cracks. Let's look at an example of how we would go through and audit our business. So over on the right hand side, we have asset and on the left hand side and in the middle, we have a tick and a cross column. And basically, it's really simple guys. I want you to go through after you've highlighted the key objections and solutions and say, does our homepage feature this promptly? No. Does our landing page, does our opt-in page, et cetera, et cetera. And just put a tick in the column and a cross in the column that it does. So again, I really want you guys to implement these actionable solutions because you will see an increase in your bottom line once that all ties together at the end. Now, we've just done an example here and this is one that we've taken from one of our clients um, and it's the homepage. The homepage does, but on no other pages do we actually feature um, these objection handling solutions. Give yourself a score out of 10, like we have done here. You can see that we have one out of 10, <laughs> okay? And if you did not score at least an eight out of 10, then you're letting a large amount of sales fall through the cracks. However, you now have a crystal clear grasp on what aspects of the business you need to develop in order to consistently grow. So I don't want this to be like a pessimistic thing or sort of a demotivator. I want this to be a little bit, a little bit of like a reality check, okay? And view this as an opportunity now to have a crystal clear grasp on how you can consistently grow your business. Step number four. Picking the most powerful way to present your solutions and objection handlers. Now let's just quickly recap, right? Now we know the reasons why our prospects would not buy from us, the top 20% of objections which account for 80% of the lost sales. I wanna make sure that you're with me here. 
how objection or product service overcomes these main objections, how our solutions translate into compelling benefits which our prospects desire, and where we need to add them in. So the question is, how the hell are we gonna present these solutions and add them in, okay? You may already have some ideas just after looking at what we have, but let's go over some super slick examples to keep your creative juices flowing. Now, an important note before we dive in. We are not just presenting our objection handling solutions. What we are really trying to do is to trying to prove your prospects that your solution will truly overcome their objection. I'm gonna read this again. We are trying to prove that your prospects, sorry, we are trying to prove to your prospects that your solution will truly overcome their objection. The key word here is proof. Just because we tell your customers we can overcome their objections, it does not mean they will believe you, right? This is a super, super big one that you need to really focus on. Just because what you say is true doesn't mean they're gonna believe that it's true. So we need to prove it to them. Without belief, nobody buys. I want you to remember this. The whole sales process and marketing in general is basically building up levels of belief and certainty in your product and your company that you can fulfill the promises that you make. Let's look at a few different types of proof we can use to ensure your customers believe you beyond a shadow of a doubt. First one, demonstration proof. No argument in the world can compare with one dramatic demonstration. This is a quote by Claude Hopkins, who is seen as the father of advertising, and it couldn't be any more accurate. Let's look at an example of a company who did this phenomenally, Otis Elevators. Now, Otis Elevators was basically an elevator safety mechanism that was invented, by eight, invented in 1852 by Alicia Otis. The company was founded in 1853, a year after he invented it, and it was brought to the market that same year in 1853 with absolutely zero success until Alicia Otis made a demonstration which legitimately changed the world. Now, in the 1800s, people were afraid of elevators. Why? Because the cord always snapped. There was no, there was nothing in place, there was no safety mechanisms in place, right? So if you got in an elevator and the cord snapped, you're about to have a pretty unfortunate time, literally falling to your death. So up until around the 1850s, most buildings in most cities were only four stories tall because no one's about to walk 10 flights of stairs to get to the top of their buildings, right? So most cities were pretty flat. Now, what happened was um, Alicia Otis basically developed this safety mechanism that when the um, elevator started to fall, a clasp a grasp of the cord so it didn't fall and it kind of stopped, right? So it was basically a safety mechanism which stopped elevators from falling all the way down to the bottom flight and stop people from dying. So he basically ran around, um, you know, telling everybody about this amazing invention he just created. It's gonna change the world. But nobody would believe him. They said, yeah, that's fantastic. I'm so glad you invented that. Have a great time dying in your own elevator, basically. People didn't trust it. No promise he could make could prove to them that his solution actually overcame their main objection. Until he set up a dramatic demonstration two years later, which literally changed the world. It took place in this image you can see here in Crystal Palace in New York in 1854, a couple years after it was created, right? And what happened was Otis, Alicia Otis, basically set up in the middle of Crystal Palace, Crystal Palace, sorry, this really, really dramatic demonstration where it was basically an elevator, as you can see here, that had no walls or anything on it. So he needed to prove to people beyond a shadow of a doubt that he could actually overcome the main objections and that his safety mechanism worked. So what happened was in the middle of the Crystal Palace, he got hoisted up on this elevator you can see here and you can see there's a rope. Now he had one of his, you know, basically staff members there at the top in the white shirt with an ax. And everybody was watching him get hoisted up in this elevator. And they were kind of saying, this guy's a little bit crazy. He's a bit of a nutter, what is he doing? And he said, Everybody, I hope you see what I've invented here. This is going to change the world. And people laughed, people mocked him, nobody really trusted him. And then he said to his staff member, go ahead, cut the cord. And everybody kind of grasped, and it was a lot of tension in the moment of silence, right? And his staff member basically, there was two cords, and his staff member basically took an ax to one of the cords, and the cord snapped, and everyone gasped because it was really, really um, stressful. They literally thought they were about to watch this guy fall to his death because from what they know, there is nothing that can stop an elevator from, you know, basically falling once it's been cut. 
and he said, go ahead, cut the second cable. Everybody gasped again, and his um, staff member basically slashed through with an axe on this second piece of rope, as you can see in this image. Everybody grasped, and the elevator was about to fall, and then it stopped because of his safety mechanism that Otis had invented. And he says, don't you see what I've done? Don't you see what I've, I've invented and brought here to you, to the world? And basically everybody went crazy. Um, you know, he was made a superstar pretty much, literally changed the world and um, his product sold out, right? So I want you to try and think about how can you use a physical demonstration to prove that your product works? And I'll go over more examples here, but I really want to sort of stress the fact that this really did change the world. Now, um, Otis's elevator safety mechanism is in buildings all around the world, right? The Petronas Towers, the World Trade Center, the Empire State Building, the Eiffel Tower, and the Burj Khalifa, which is literally the tallest building on earth, okay? Now, basically, what happened after Otis demonstrated that his product worked and his safety mechanism really did save lives, it literally changed the architecture of every major city across the world. As you can see, all these famous buildings started using Otis's technology to really build skyscrapers, and it really kind of changed the architecture. Now, let's look at another example, shark. The shark vacuums, right? What's another way that you can demonstrate your product? Side-by-side -side power comparisons. You can see on the left-hand side, there's a Dyson vacuum cleaner, a very well-known brand. And on the right-hand side, a Shark vacuum cleaner, which is an up-and-coming brand. Now, this is an infomercial. I would highly, um, you know, re I basically suggest that you watch infomercials as cheesy and as corny as and shitty that as they can be. They're really, really good at showing you um, different ways that you can demonstrate your proof. So they have a side-by-side -side power comparison. You can see these little monitors that are sitting down on the left and right hand side here is it's actually showing you the suction force of each um, vacuum and obviously the shark is gonna win. Let's look at Timex, a watch company, right? So you can see this is a really old school ad and the reason I like showing you guys old school ads is because a lot of the marketing done today um, isn't very effective. I'm just gonna be blatantly honest. It's very, the, the barrier to entry is so low these days. You can go on Facebook and set up an ad within five seconds and spend $2. Whereas back in the day when they were running newspaper ads and direct mail ads, their ads had to actually justify their existence through sales, okay? So this is why they have such effective demonstrations. So a customer objection for this watch. Your watches are not shockproof, right? Timex took um, a great pride in the fact that their watches were shockproof, but a lot of people didn't believe them. So what was the demonstration they used to overcome it? Well, it's verifying the shockproof feature via a baseball bat shock test, right? So this is a super awesome and a super creative way that they've created basically to show you that we can hit this watch with a baseball bat against a ball and it's still going to work, right? So I'm sure you've heard the slogan of this company before. They take a licking yet keep on ticking, right? Here's another example. Customer objection, <laughs> your watches are not waterproof. So what was the demonstration they used? They verified the waterproof feature by strapping their watches to turtles, okay? So you can imagine that this type of ad gets a lot of attention. Now I want you to think, how could you do this in today's environment? How could you basically use a demonstration technique to prove that one of the features in your products work? Could you imagine today if there was a watch who had a waterproof feature and they strapped it to turtles and they took a really awesome video of turtles swimming around in a tank with their watch and then put it on Facebook? That ad will get heaps of attention but also does a really great job of overcoming the main objections that people have when buying waterproof watches, which is that it doesn't work, okay? Here's another example when it comes down to the shockproof. Verifying the shockproof feature via thundering hooves a shock pass. So they got race horses to wear the, sh the watch while they are running, okay? Super awesome examples here. Now, what's another form of proof? The creative guarantee. So, every, obviously everyone knows Domino's, right? Well, what you may not know about Domino's is that they became so massive because of their 30 minutes of free delivery. Domino's basically found out that people hate eating and waiting for their pizza more than they do about worrying of the quality of it, right? So let's just take a Friday night, for example, someone sitting on his couch watching TV and he gets really hungry and wants to order a pizza. Back in the day before Domino's, you would order a pizza and it would take, you know, 60 to 90 minutes before your pizza came. Why? Because people are putting so much emphasis on, you know, gourmet quality, et cetera, et cetera. Domino's highlighted the customer rejection that they hate waiting for the pizza more than they do care about the quality of it. So what did they come up with? A creative guarantee. Fresh, hot pizza delivered to your door in 30 minutes or less 
guarantee. Now, I'm not sure how many people have died from, uh, you know, Domino's delivery cars over the years, but they did sell a shitload of pizzas, and they grew into, you know, a basically a multi-international uh, franchise. Now, here's a book that teaches guys how to have sex. It may sound, you know, a little bit <laughs> politically incorrect, but ultimately, one of the objections is, I don't think it's going to work. It also helps women, by the way, just in case if you're interested in buying this, but one of the objections is, I don't think it's going to work. This is a huge objection that most people get when it comes to, you know, workouts. You know, if it's a 12-week transformation guarantee, um, et cetera, et cetera. It could be something about energy. You could have an energy supplement that basically improves people's energy on a daily basis. What was the guarantee that these people used? Well, it's a little bit more creative than if you don't like it, get your money back. Here's the guarantee. 21 incredible days of the most erotic, heart-pumping, and thrilling sex of your life, or you pay nothing. So you can see how the copywriter and the marketer here has basically gone to that next level and basically painted a picture of the benefit and included that in the guarantee. How can you do this with your product? For example, if you're selling teeth whitening kits, three shades whiter teeth in 21 days where you pay nothing. If you don't have the best, most beautiful white like sparkling smile that you've ever had in your entire life in the next 60 days, you pay nothing. Right? I want you to think about how you can use this. If you're uh, you know, a, a lawyer, for example, if you don't have the smoothest, most stress-free you know, uh, case or service with us, you pay nothing. Again, you gotta do a little bit of work on it because I understand that if you're a lawyer, that's a lot of money that could go out your door, but do some thinking. Other examples of creative guarantees. The 110% money back guarantee. The try us free guarantee, which ties into the 120 night risk-free trial when we're looking at the mattresses and the multiple benefit guarantee. E.g., you must experience X, Y, Z to get the guarantee. Now, another form of proof which is really powerful, explaining the mechanism behind the product. What does this mean? It means we're gonna give your prospects a rational explanation behind why the product works so they can buy into your promise with believability. Let's take Slice, for example. Slice did really, really well. Slice is basically a soft drink that broke into a multi-billion dollar market, which is notorious for being hard to grab market share in, being the soft drink industry, because you have Coca-Cola, you have Pepsi, you have Fanta, you have all these giants, but they did it and they broke in and took 8%. Now, what is the mechanism behind this product that actually makes it a good uh, you know, service? Oh, sorry, a good product. 10% fruit juice, you can see on the can there, Slice with 10% fruit juice. Now the marketing execution of this mechanism was Slice, a better tasting soft drink because it contains 10% fruit juice. So what we wanna do is separate our product from our competitors' products using a reason why by explaining the mechanism behind the product. It sounds a little bit complicated, but the difference between Slice and Coca-Cola is that Slice contains 10% fruit juice. So you really wanna talk about that upfront in your marketing. You don't wanna hide that fact. You don't wanna just overlook it like it's just something, right? This is a key differentiator. So when someone walks into a, you know, a supermarket or whatever and they see Slice next to cola, they may say, hmm, I wonder what it tastes like to have 10% fruit juice in my soft drink. And then they purchase it. This blew up Slice as a company. Another great example, Kleenex towers, all right? I'm using all these old ads because they do such a phenomenal job of demonstrating it. So the mechanism was two layers thick. Kleenex came out with you know these paper towers that are two layers thick versus most paper towers at the time were only one layer thick. So what's the marketing execution actually look like on this? Kleenex towers absorb 50% more because they are two layers thick, not one. So I hope this is really starting to build up lots of examples, lots of ideas about how your product is different and how you can effectively use that difference to create a buying frenzy. Now, let's have, what happens if you're, in e -commerce, if you're not an e-commerce business and you're actually um, a buyer's home agent? Well, the mechanism or the difference could be that you're actually an ex-real estate agent. So if we look at the marketing execution here, you can buy a dream home for the best price because we know what dirty tricks real estate agents use to inflate prices and how to avoid them. So you really wanna look at your experience as a company and the personnel that you have on board as to what separates you and everybody else. So there's other people who are just buyer's agents and then you're the buyer's agent who was an ex-real estate agent. So use that to your advantage. Let's look at a stock trading firm. The mechanism is that we vet our stocks with a three-step process. So the marketing execution. Invest your money with us because we carefully analyze stocks using a proprietary three-step vetting process which actually predicts 
how likely a stock is to grow. So again, we're not just saying we're better. We're not just saying invest with us. We're saying invest with us because, and then you follow that with a unique selling point that is involved or tied in with your product. Testimonials, another amazing form of proof. Let's look at what testimonials are supposed to actually do. They're supposed to overcome an objection or fear. Future forecasting, which is basically showing them what their future is going to look like if they decide to invest in your service. For example, if you're selling a make money online product, ideally the future is they make money and they can travel the world, buy whatever, right? So you may have a testimonial featuring someone in the new Lamborghini they just bought based on the information they learned in your course. Justify the price. Someone saying, I can't believe how cheap this is compared to the value that I've gotten out of it. Show it's safe, easy, and transformative. If you're selling a 12-week um, personal training transformation challenge, use before and afters, right? And vouch for the guarantee. Perhaps you've got a money-back guarantee, right? Not everyone's going to believe that on face value. So if you have a testimonial that has someone vouching for the guarantee, you've got to be careful with these ones because you don't want to say, yeah, I had a terrible experience with the product, but they gave me my money back. Perhaps they had to give the product back for a reason that didn't apply to your product being shit. <laughs> and then they said, look, I really wish I didn't have to give this product back, but they did give me all my money, which was fantastic. That is another form of belief, okay? Here's some examples of testimonials and how to use them effectively. So you can see the headline in this ad is, thanks, you guys saved me $8,465. Guys like me need guys like you and our wives to protect us. So a, copy, a copywriter would have never thought to add in and our wives. So it sounds like a real human being wrote that. You want your testimonials to be genuinely authentic. Don't make anything up. Don't lie. Don't you know hype them up or anything like that. Ask for genuine testimonials and you will get genuine responses that actually work a lot better than if you were to you know lie about it, whatever, right? And our wives add so much credibility and believability to this testimonial that nobody questions the legitimacy of it for a second. Another example, your newsletter has helped me make a couple of hundred thousand dollars in the past year. When I've cleared a million dollars, I'll be out to buy your lunch. So that when I'll be out to buy your lunch is again, so authentic and so genuine, a copywriter never would have thought to add that in. Let's look at another example. And I'm gonna give you a pro tip here. You wanna ask your clients to take photos. So this is an example of a testimony that was received. I'm almost 86 years old, retired aerospace engineer. I retired in 1994. My wife retired the same year from a real estate career. I have been blessed with longevity. I did 85 chin-ups over a three-hour period well after my 85th birthday. So don't just get that testimonial accepted. Ask them, hey, that's awesome you did 85 chin-ups. Can I see a photo of it? Because put yourself in uh, the position of a man who's a similar age of this guy, right? Let's just say you're a man, you're 80 years old, you're thinking of potentially investing in this product and you read this testimony of a guy who's a similar age to you and is doing chin-ups. On face value, that doesn't really have any correlation as to why you should buy the product. But what it does on a more subconscious level, it says that, hey, people who you wish you could be, e.g. most 80-year-olds can't do 85 chin-ups, you want those people on your team. And those guys who are above you achieving all these amazing things, they're investing in products like this, so you should too. It installs a level of belief that you can't, you know, I can't write an ad and say, this is gonna help you get in touch with people who do 85 chin-ups or install that level of confidence and belief in you, but these images can. You wanna be on this guy's team, right? Another one, Instagram influencers. Send your products to Instagram influencers. If you don't have a product and it's a service, help Instagram influencers with your service. Let's just say, for example, you're a tanning company and you do tans. Get an Instagram influencer in, do their tan for free, and get them to post a photo linking you, okay? This level of proof is amazing because they have an audience of loyal, uh, a loyal following basically on all their social platforms. This is a company that's doing it really well, really well called Happy Skin Co. It's basically laser, um, laser hair skin removal. Um, and what they do is they send their products out to all these influencers, get them to take photos and post about it, and then they make a shit ton of sales, okay? You can do this again as a service. If you're a lawyer, you can get some you know, top executives to talk about how you helped them with a the case. You know, Ideally not one that they wouldn't po want to post publicly about. They could literally just say, they treated me really well, you know, things like that. Product page reviews, you want all these reviews to be featured on your product page. If you don't have reviews on your product page, you're falling behind. People need this trust. You don't want to have a reviews page um, separate to your product page, you want to have it in one so people don't have to click through lots of different tabs. Um, pro tip number two, feature key objection handling reviews at the top. So you can see here's a good example 
of reviews. Here's an even better example of featuring the top reviews, which focus on main objections at the top of the page. Before and afters, these are pretty standard, but what you want to do with your before and afters is you want to specifically call out the number of um, you know, pounds or kilograms or whatever it is they lost or the improvements they've made. The, the photo is good, just having the photo next to each other, but adding in numbers, adding in a quote, adding in the full name of the person adds a lot more authenticity to the testimonial and believability. Pro tip number three, pull at your client's heartstrings. If you have a product that um, relates emotionally to your client, so for example, it could be wedding photography. It could be as simple as a dog bed like we can see here in this image. Get photos of people's dogs in there, right? So if you own a dog right now and you're thinking of buying a, a bed, perhaps you even own a German Shepherd and you see this testimonial, you think, oh my God, I can literally picture my dog sitting in this bed at the edge of you know my bed or in my room, okay? You wanna pull at their heartstrings. Another great example, you can see this product here is like a sling or a pouch basically for babies. I'm not very uh, caught up on my baby attire or what it's called, but you can see there's a picture of the mum who's put their baby in there, right? So I'm a mother right now thinking of buying this. I can envision my child in it and it just basically makes my heart melt, okay? Face to camera reviews or unboxing videos. These are great. So again, if you have a product or if you have a service, you want your customers sitting face to camera talking about it. It just improves the credibility of your marketing and the authenticity of your company. And reviews are really, really good as well. Now, here's an even extra special pro tip. You versus your competitor reviews. Now, you can see iPhone here. They're kind of comparing two iPhones, but you could do an iPhone versus Samsung. Or for example, if you're selling a watch, it could be your watch versus a competitor's watch. Now, it's I'm pretty sure it's illegal to directly pay somebody to say that my watch is better than theirs, but you can send it to them, and if it's your watch is better than theirs, they will very much highlight that for you, and then you can use that video in your ads. So instead of a video of you saying, hey, our product's better than XYZ, you'll have a video of somebody else who is potentially an authority in the industry like this guy is here saying it for you. The Great Wall of Social Proof is what we call this. You want to have a separate page as well that is just all the social proof. So people can literally spend hours on these pages, especially if they're making a big investment. I'm sure you've um, heard of Sam Ovens. He sells his consulting program for upwards of $2,000. That's a big investment for a lot of people, right? So you want to have a page that's dedicated to overcoming all the objections. If I'm about to drop two grand on something, I want to make damn sure that it's going to work. So I'm going to read at least 10 of these different videos. Oh, sorry, watch 10 of these videos. Again, you want your clients to send photos, right? So here's an example of an investment newsletter that gives financial advice. Here's a testimonial they got back from one of their readers. We took delivery of her three weeks ago and are cruising around the Bahamas. In October, we will take her through the Panama Canal over to the Pacific side since I just bought a home in Mexico. Okay, now this is super powerful. Now, what would be even better than this testimonial photo? Well, if he was sitting in the actual boat, that would be even better. If he had a, a selfie of him and his wife and him and his family in the boat, that would be even better. But if you are selling something that helps people in their lives, get them to take photos in ways in which it's actually helped them. Another example. We were able to take our family to Thailand with the money we made from your course. Thank you. Get them to send you a photo of the family in Thailand. Don't just take it on face value, okay? First of all, it's good because you can make sure that you're getting legitimate reviews from your customers. But second, having a photo like this, potentially using it as a remarketing ad on Facebook is super powerful. Imagine if someone visited um, your sales course page, they didn't buy, they went back on Facebook and they saw an ad of someone who did buy and now they're in Thailand with their entire family. These like types of ads are really, really powerful. Okay, now... How do you collect compelling testimonials? Number one, don't lead them to the answer. Don't treat your customers like idiots because they're not. Reward them with an incentive. So for example, it could be a 5% off discount coupon code. You can set up you know, automated email sequences to do that. Keep the conversation going. You want to keep, you want to talk with your customers on a daily basis. You know, have a group where your customers can go back and forth. You don't just want to be a purchase one off and they never hear you again. You want to run testimonial generation ads. So you can run ads on Facebook, Instagram that basically say, hey, we saw you purchased from us six days ago. Come back and leave us a review and we'll give you a discount code. But most importantly here, you want to run automated post-purchase email sequences. So if you're using um, you know, any platforms like WooCommerce, Shopify, Magento, there's heaps of different apps that you can use and set this up 
where it sends out an email like three days after they receive the order and ask them for a photo of the product and them with it and in exchange for a discount code. Or for example, if you're a mortgage broker or you're in the service-based you know, industry, like your home, a property investment or real estate, whatever, you can automate an email sequence that says, hey, we know you had a consultation with us a few days ago. How was it? Let us know what your experience was. Another form of proof, education, okay? Types of education we can use. You can use free reports. You can use blog posts. You can use articles. You can use videos. Kind of like this one, right? What I'm doing here is I'm educating you guys. And I'm showing you ways that you can actually in, you know, use products or services or these strategies to grow your own business. You can use webinars, right? So here's an example of a free report that we use to help educate our customers. You can use blog posts. So here's an example of a blog post that educates older women on how to look not younger, but how to basically enhance their natural beauty, right? So five makeup tips for older women, and it basically features the products at the bottom of the blog post, like we can see here. Articles, right? You can write articles based on your own products that promote your product, but also educate your customer as to why it works more effectively. This kind of goes back to the mechanism. Videos, right? So this is a really good video to have on a page. So for example, if your customers are always wondering where are you located or an objection is I don't know how to get to you, have a video on your website that talks about where you're located. And you can see right here, 381 Swan Street, basically promoting like the map directions, okay? Make it super easy for them. Webinar, I'm sure you've all seen Sam Ovens. He's selling a, a course on how to basically become a highly paid consultant. Most people have lots of questions. They don't fully understand it. So he educates them through a webinar, which is followed up by a sales pitch. So the question is, which presentation of proof should you choose for your business and your solutions? As many as you can, right? The answer is the more, the better, okay? You want to pick as many as you possibly can. Step number five, putting it all together for predictable growth. So final recap, let's quickly run through it. Now we know the reasons why our prospects would not buy from us, the top 20% of objections, which account for 80% of the lost sales, how our product or service overcomes these main objections, how our solutions translate into compelling benefits, which our prospects desire, where we need to present these solutions in our marketing, sales funnel, and online presence, and finally, how to physically present your solutions in a compelling way which builds belief. Okay, so what should you do now? Go forth and implement these strategies to overcome your customers' objections and grow your own business, all right? I hope you guys have really enjoyed this training and you can move forward and you actually take action based on the things that I've shown in this video. But do not worry, I'm not sending you into the battle unarmed because I'm gonna give you the objection sharing system for free, right? So what this is, it's basically a package which you can use, it's gonna give you actionable systems and step-by-step -step templates that you can use to go through and implement in your business what I just showed you today. Perhaps you wanna do this yourself, perhaps you wanna hand this to a marketing company you're working with already, perhaps you wanna hand this to an employee, right? What I want you to do is use this information and use it to grow your business, not just sit here and learn and say, hey, those ideas were cool and go away and do nothing. That's not gonna help you make more money. That's not gonna help you build the business that you really deserve, okay? So, however, trivia. I'm not sure if you remember this little guy, right? I asked you a question about him. And the question was, what does the Mexican walking fish have to do with you growing your business? The answer, the axolotl, AKA Mexican walking fish, uses their camouflaging abilities to match their skin color with their unique background so he can avoid his predators, all right? But what the hell does that have to do with today's masterclass? Well, your marketing must match your customer's unique objections so you can avoid them, just like the axolotl avoids their prey. So that's just a little bit of fun, um, you know, nothing too significant there, but I want you to think about it, right? Your marketing must match your customer's unique objections so you can avoid them. Anyways, what are the next steps you should take to effectively implement this system into your business? First, download the Objection Shattering System at digitalknockout.com.au slash objections. You can go there now and you can simply get this for free. It's a total value of $499, but you won't have to pay anything today. We want to give this to you so you can actually implement it and see results in your business. I believe you should help people by actually helping people, <laughs> okay? So go ahead and do that now. And then let's cover the next steps. So number one, secure your objection shattering system. And you see I've got a bit of a motivational pitch there with Rocky in the back. So I want you to picture you and now Rocky about to go and overcome the biggest challenge of their life. Next step, 
Identify and list your customer's most ruthless objections. Number three, organize the most common objections into our persuasive products transformation table, which you'll get in that objection shattering system. Number four, audit your online presence to locate where your marketing lacks these objection handling solutions. Number five, pick the most powerful way to present your solution. Number six, implement the above steps. Take it to market and grow your business with predictability. This works. This is what we've used to help our clients and us generate $135 million in sales across a whole range of niches and industries. So I hope you guys actually implement this and take action. You don't have to believe in all the hypey promises that people make you on YouTube or ads or whatever because this is based on sound facts and and sound sales psychology as you've seen in this presentation today. Or... We can do it all for you, okay? There is also a solution as well. So here's the deal. I'm offering you now a free 30-minute strategic consultation with a brutally honest marketing expert. Here's what you're going to get in that consultation. We're basically going to accurately identify and list your customer's most ruthless objections for you. We will find ways your product or service can effectively overcome your customer's objections for you. We will order your online presence so you know exactly where your marketing falls short, plus where to add these objection handling solutions. We will show you the most powerful and persuasive way to present your solutions. And we will help you get started implementing this business growing system by yourself so you don't have to fiddle around for the next 12 months. I've shown a lot of different business owners this presentation and they think it's fantastic, but at the end of it, they just say, look, this all sounds great, but it sounds like a lot of work. I still don't really know where to get started or how to do it. So what I'm offering you today is a chance to sit down with a brutally honest strategist who is basically going to do this all for you and walk you through step by step how it works, okay? But I want to give you an honest warning, okay? I'm not about to say that, you know, there's only two of these sessions left at the end of the month because that's a blatant lie. The variation of how many sessions we have available on a month-to-month basis changed on our workload, okay? But what I will say is there's not infinite amounts and it's first come first served. So if you're watching this video now, I would highly advise you to go in, click the button below, book in a free strategic consultation with one of the digital marketing experts that you'll be speaking with, who's not going to give you any bullshit, who's going to tell you straight if your product sucks, if your business sucks, or if there's a really awesome opportunity for you to grow your business using the strategies that we've talked about today. Okay, again, I'm not saying that there's one session left or two sessions left because that's a blatant lie but it is first come, first serve. So our time is limited. These sessions are for free. There's no hidden sales pitch. Um, What we're gonna do is outline what I've just walked you through. You can go and do it by yourself, or if you do want additional help for us, simply let us know, okay? So go ahead, click the button below, and I hope to be speaking with you guys very shortly. I hope you enjoyed this session. Go ahead, click the button below, and we'll speak soon.